Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video in which we will be creating one of the most requested builds I've had asked of me ever since the new DLC dropped. And that is, if it wasn't clear from the thumbnail and title, a VTOL SSTO which uses robotic motors to swivel its engines to enable both vertical and horizontal thrust. Now you can see me building it here. When it came to designing the craft, I first had to decide what the function and capability of it would be. The first decision was whether or not it should be terrestrial, i.e. incapable of reaching orbit without assistance or not. I hope you support my decision to make this thing a single staged orbit craft as those are much cooler than normal aircraft, I hope you'll agree. So once the challenge of an SSTO space plane had been laid out, the next question was the ship's range and capability. Now I toyed with the idea of it just being like a cargo SSTO, incapable of travelling much further than LKO, but in the end I thought that it would be it would, make, it would make a better video to have the ship land on the surface of a celestial body and then return. The cheapest place to land and return from is Minmus, so that's where we'll be sending this thing, my first VTOL prototype. Now you may have noticed something here, the motors that swivel the engines between the VTOL and horizontal flight positions are only attached to the two nuclear engines on this thing, which means it won't have enough power to perform vertical takeoff or landing from Kerbin itself. Now I picked this for two reasons. The first is that I wanted the craft to be versatile and capable of carrying six Kerbals and a small amount of cargo as well, and since we'll also need enough fuel to uh, reach Minmus and subsequently return from Minmus, we end up with a rather heavy ship. We really need to be using rapier engines for our Kerbin ascent, which don't really offer much thrust from a standstill. The four on this craft would certainly not provide enough power to enable vertical takeoff, but you know, if we were to add more engines, then we wouldn't have enough Delta V to reach Minmus in the first place. Uh, the second reason that this craft will only be capable of vertical takeoff and landing in places with no atmosphere is that, well, that's the point. Aircraft can glide to a smooth and realistic landing on places like Kerbin, Lathe, and Eve, and conventional landing like this makes far more sense for these places as it's a lot more fuel efficient, particularly talking about ascents as well. Uh, in fact, for our return to the KSC at the end of this video, I won't even be using the engines at all. We'll just glide all the way back to the runway unpowered. On the flip side of this, normally my SSTOs to atmosphereless moons have to land vertically on their engines, since engines have to do all the slowing down, since there's no atmosphere to slow down with. And, you know, once they've touched down on the engines, they don't have to sort of topple forwards and land on their landing gear. So it's not exactly the smoothest and most comfortable experience for the crew and or any delicate science equipment on board and larger crafts like my 208 seat ultimatum SSTO to ELU came perilously close to buckling and collapsing under their own weight when they did that belly flop slamming down into horizontal position upon touching down on the engines. Now by having the swivel mounts for the nuclear engines we're not only making a cool because we can craft but actually addressing a problem that nearly all of my preceding SSTOs encountered and that is having the craft land realistically. Realistically in that we touch down gently and don't have to allow the ship to belly flop onto its wheels during the final seconds of the landing. So I hope you're not too disappointed with my reasoning and I hope this makes sense. That's not to say I won't ever do a VTOL SSTO that can ascend from Kerbin vertically, but for this craft and for what I wanted it to do, I felt that the VTOL system was best suited for this case. It actually, I feel it actually enhances the craft, uh, craft's abilities rather than just be some arbitrary feature that only unnecessarily complicates the ship. And so with the introduction and reasoning behind this ship and its mission is out of the way, we can press on and head to the minty land of Minmus. I say that even though we are currently well into our, dis um, our ascent at this point, I feel like I've talked about SSTO ascent enough to not really need to go over it in great detail, but basically up until about the 20 kilometer mark we're going to be going fairly flat, trying to get as much speed built up as possible using the efficient air breathing mode of the rapiers, then once they flame out we're going to pitch up a little bit more aggressively just because we don't have very much oxidizer and the thrust to weight ratio of the nuclear engines is very poor so we want to basically provide as much opportunity to circularize on the nuclear engines as we can by raising our periapsis um sorry our apoapsis up as high as we can using the rapier engines obviously you don't want to point up too aggressively because then the air resistance of the craft starts to outweigh the uh, the power of the engines it effectively becomes one big air brake so you've got to be careful I feel about 30 degrees is a good balance to strike, but it, the mileage varies from craft to craft. Now, although looking at the timeline of this video, you can see it's a fairly short one as far as my videos go. I mean, at least my more recent videos have generally been longer than this, but this is not too long a video. However, executing this mission, it took, a, it took quite a bit of patience. And the reason for this 
is because in order to avoid the Kraken attacking this ship, I had to do everything at real-time speed. Uh, and when I say real-time speed, it's not that's not completely true. I can use time warp, but I can't use physical time warp. So when I'm burning with the nuclear engines, it has to be done in real time. And the nuclear engines, you know, their burns are very, very long because their thrust-to-weight ratio is so poor. So it was a lot of just faffing around on my phone, just <laughs> executing burns. Uh, the reason for this is because the nuclear engines are not like solidly attached to the craft. They're attached to motors. And so when you execute physical time warp, uh, they start to bend a bit and start pointing off in, ro in random directions. Put it on, the <laughs> put the warp on high enough and they start to spaz out and the craft collapses. So I had to do everything at real time speed in order to avoid uh, the nuclear engines misaligning and, you know, not uh, working the way they're supposed to. So that's why kind of the longest parts of this video are going to be the circuit, well, the ascent from Kerbin and then our burn to Minmus. I've actually played the footage back at about 12 times speed, I think, at this point, just squinting at the timeline there. So, uh, yeah, I guess it should make, hopefully, it shouldn't be any, look any different to you or any more tedious than my videos usually are to you. I just thought I'd comment, but uh, I just want you to appreciate, guys, the lengths that I go to for bringing you the content that you love. And speaking of <laughs> things that you love, this video was sponsored by Bricks. Bricks are a great building material. Uh, they keep many of you, including myself, dry houses are you know pretty much incomplete without bricks so everyone use the link in the description to buy some bricks okay we're at Mimus now that was the filler part <laughs> i just gonna think this is why i should probably start scripting these videos so anyway, Minmus. <laughs> One of the reasons I picked Minmus as our destination, aside from it being an easy destination in terms of fuel requirements, uh, is that it has a very, very low surface gravity. And this makes it far easier to balance the craft from performing our vertical landing and ultimately our vertical takeoff. Uh, with my normal SSTOs that have engines mounted to the rear of the fuselage, performing landing burns is very easy because the engines are placed at the end of the fuselage. No matter how much fuel is drained or whatever, like anything like that, they'll always fire along the craft center of mass so it won't spin out of control. This changes entirely when we have this VTOL mechanism. I placed the engines around the approximate center of mass of the craft when I was in the space plane hangar for this thing to enable a steady as a steadier flight as possible but ultimately it's very difficult to get this exactly right especially when you know you're planning it based on a craft that's fully fueled when when we're now we're here we've burned a lot of our fuel already. And that's because as the craft burns fuel, its center of mass, uh, the, the location of the center of mass shifts. This is somewhat mitigated by the fact that the nuclear engines are very heavy, so they contribute significantly to the craft's overall center of mass, and this is further helped in this craft's case by those liquid fuel tanks that swivel around with them, uh, which helps shift the center of mass as much as possible to be in line with the center of thrust of the nuclear engines. We could have made this even easier by adding a second pair of nuclear engines toward the front of the plane and then shift our current ones further back, but this would have added too much weight and as you can see I didn't end up really needing, I didn't really end up having too much of a problem to land this thing. Uh, this was definitely helped by the fact that I packed way more reaction wheels into this craft than I would normally incorporate into an SSTO or any spacecraft really, just because it allows me a little bit more control over our orientation. But you know, it all worked out in the end. Here we are, touched down on the surface of Minmus. You can see me here just doing some science. We won't get very much because I've already visited Minmus in this save before. I thought we could also deploy some, you know, deployable science and then realise that while I've packed the container, I hadn't actually filled it up with any equipment. So, whoops! Maybe next time we can deploy some field science. But, you know, at least we've got our Science Junior, Mystery Go and all the others. And now uh, we can gracefully disembark the ship uh, to gather a surface sample from the s surface, uh, from the ground. Because where else would you get a surface sample from, to be honest? There goes our obligatory flant plag. And then I guess that's pretty much all of our surface shenanigans are wrapped, to be honest. Now, we're using the kerboils I used in my last Midmus SSTO, which means that they were picked by my Discord server members. So the pilot is Thanos Kerman. Because, of course, he's not a scientist, he's a pilot. So we'll use uh, Dilson Kerbin here just to reset the mystery, not the mystery goo, the science junior. Not that we really need to, but it's just that I didn't realize when I was building it, but the science junior doors actually protrude through the cargo bay doors, like they clip through it, unless we close those doors. So we'll just close the doors using the scientist because scientists can reset 
Science Junior units, and then I guess we already have now, but we can begin our ascent. So first things first, gain some vertical height, then make sure we're pointing 90 degrees relative to the surface before uh, switching ourselves into horizontal mode, really kicking up the thrust of the engines and blasting our way off into orbit. The reason I didn't go for full thrust of the nuclear engines is because, like I said earlier, they're not pointing exactly along the center of mass, so full thrust actually does cause this thing to start tipping forward a little bit. So by just you know easing off on the accelerator a little bit, we can maintain level flight without a problem. The reaction wheels can handle uh, the displaced center of thrust. And once we've done the hard part of, it wasn't very difficult, was it? Once we've done the hard part of getting into Minmus orbit, we can start plotting our way back to Kerbin. And again, we're like I said earlier, we're not going to use any engine burning to get there. Well, I tell a lie, kind of. We're going to uh, basically do some aero brakes to get our periapsis, well, our apoapsis, <laughs> nice and low. We'll then circularize in low Kerbin orbit just to make it a little bit easier to get our Kerbal Space Center encounter. But we won't be burning very much, you know, we certainly won't be using the rapier engines. I don't think, anyway, I'm saying all of this just because I, don't, I, vague, I have a vague memory of executing this mission. It was very late last night, I've been working quite hard to get this video out in time. And I don't really remember doing some of it. <laughs> like, I feel like I blacked out, I wasn't drinking or anything, it's just like I just got blackout... I got blackout hammered on too much KSP. Is that a thing? Anyway, uh, this thing held up pretty well, all things considered, in terms of heat tolerance. First aero break done. You can see uh, we've got our apoapsis nice and low, so we may as well just, like, we can leave it at just the one aero break. Get ready to circularize at our apoapsis just to bring our periapsis out of the ground and beyond the atmospheric line. Sometimes I don't bother if I can see I'm getting on a rough Kerbal Space Center trajectory, but in this case, I wasn't, so I had to just circularize and then do a second retrograde burn to get ourselves on a more desirable course, which I am there. I'm slightly eccentric to the Kerbal Space Center, but if I enter the atmosphere pointing anti-normal, we'll be able to kind of steer our way towards the runway. And I ended up almost undershooting a bit here, uh, overshooting I should say. Uh, so I had to be very aggressive with our turn, so probably not the most realistic thing to do if you want to be aiming for like, you know, low g-forces that Kerbals could survive, but I'm not, so I didn't mind. And there is the runway looming into sight, so we're coming in at a slight angle, but a pretty manageable one considering that this is an aircraft, not like a rocket, so we can steer pretty effortlessly, and it does glide quite nicely, even when the fuel tanks are fully empty. In fact, speaking of fuel tanks, I never mentioned this at the time, but you can see those little ones under the wings. That's just because otherwise the wheels would just be floating there. And you can see a, a textbook landing. Deja vu. The way you can stop that from happening is you set the friction control of the uh, front wheels to be zero. I forgot to do this and as a result we did a sick, totally radical drift on touchdown. And I guess I told a lie there, didn't I? We did end up using the rapiers. I tried to get it back on the runway and then decided that, I, you know what, I couldn't be bothered. I really wanted to go to bed at this point, so I just did a nice dramatic zoom out because I knew at this point I could use this footage here and put the end screen on top and no one would notice aside from the fact that I just outlined the entire thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and you enjoyed the craft. I've put a link in the description to download it if you want. On screen there are links to videos. Uh, the one on the left was chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. Uh, there's also links to Twitter, Discord, Patreon and Instagram. My merch all in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video again and have a good rest of the day.